On to this story now, Statistician General Risenga Malulege recently released the Inequality Trends Report for South Africa, which found that the country remains one of the most unequal nations in the world. The report also reveals that white people earned three times more than black people on average two decades after the end of apartheid. Let's get more now on the story with Stats Director Werner Ruch. Thank you very much, Mr. Ruch, for joining us. I mean, this is not the first time that we're hearing this um, information. Um, about how much uh, inequality is growing in South Africa. Um, can you just speak to us about the recommendations that State SA has been making through the years? Well, I think uh, we have to also understand that, that progress has been made when it comes to inequality reduction. I think if you look at government policies um, at its very heart, starting with the RDP back in 94, inequality reduction and poverty eradication has been at the heart. And this has strained all the way through up to today's national development plan and our vision for 2030. They remain the core and thus they remain the all government programs and policies must demonstrate their ability to focus on inequality. So I think now if we look at some of the findings of the report to say, okay, how can we contextualize what we have found? If we now look and we see that black Africans still remain uh, one of the most unequal groups in our, in our country, but I think it's also important to like understand that in, in, in the various dimensions of inequality. So if I can take one as an example, if we look at asset inequality, uh, if we look between 2009 and 2015, we have seen that the, the most asset growth, asset ownership levels have increased the most for black Africans in the country relative to the other population groups, which is a very positive sign that they are catching up. But unfortunately, they started at a very low base. So even these bigger gains they still remain behind other population groups in terms of their overall asset ownership levels, and so, so they have uh, a, a, largest, a larger asset inequality um, compared to other population groups. Mm. Um, now, when you look at uh, a country like South Africa, most of the time we'll be blaming um, government for mm -hmm. uh, some of the problems that we face, and you know, with some situations rightfully so. But the private sector, where do they come in? Because there's also pay disparities there. Yes, most certainly. So I think um, the, everyone has a role to play in the, to eradicate inequality in this country. Uh, we've, we, we, we know the historical context that where we came from and that, that sort of uh, manufactured a lot of these problems that we still see stemming today. So if we still look at where the biggest problems lie, where are the, the poorest areas or the most unequal areas, you will see if you look at the geography of it, we will still see Eastern Cape, Limpopo, Kozulu Natal, uh, parts of Northwest. So there's the, the, the historical ties to our past still have this big influence on, on the shape of inequality. But um, in today's, we know that the, 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 the larger strategy that government has adopted and the strategy that has worked in other, inter, uh, in other countries has been economic growth and inclusive economic growth to make sure that uh, all South Africans are getting an equal slice uh, of the pie. So if we now start speaking, if we now want to just jump quickly back and look at the the household economy size uh, side of the situation. Uh, the household economy accounts for roughly half of GDP uh, in the country. So what's happening there is very important. If we look at 2006, uh, white-headed households accounted for about 45% of all household ex uh, expenditure in the country, where black Africans only accounted for 42%. Now, as we now move from 2006 to 2015, what we actually see is that black households have made significant gains. They've moved from about 42% to just under 50% of all total household expenditures accounted for by black households, where we see a decrease in white households from about 45 to about 36%. So. Uh, but when we look at overall population shares in the country, we know that South Africa is made up of almost 80% black Africans and only 10% uh, white South Africans. And so you can still see the inequality that exists within that household economy that then has a ripple effect uh, onto, onto uh, other segments of the economy. Now, every time we look at the hierarchy in South Africa, we know that in terms of success in life and uh, inequality or equality, they'll, they'll be the white man first, uh, then the white woman po possibly, the black man and the black woman is always at the bottom of the food chain. Why is this and when is it going to change? 
Well, if we if we look at the actual hierarchy, it's more likely that black women are probably at the the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to to, to the hierarchy. But I think that it, it's a, it's a bit hard to to look at it just in those levels. If you look at sort of average income, average expenditure, yes, that that's sort of the the composition that we we do see. But I think we have to also remember there's there's international factors that well at play. I mean, when we see the gender disparity that exists in our country, and we know that. Um, Males uh, earn about uh, 70, or women earn about 70 percent of what males earn, uh, and so there's that gender pay gap. But this pay gap is not unique to South Africa. It's we see it in the United States, we see it in developing countries around the world. I think the last figure I quoted was that for every dollar a man earns in the United States, a woman earns about 76 cents. So we're not that far off from the the, the pay inequality that we see there. Unfortunately, when you come to look at it from a racial perspective, we do see a, a much more extreme picture in South Africa, uh, unfortunately. Right. Werner Roch, director at Stats SA. Let's leave it there for now. Thank you for joining us.